One of the Parkland high school students has had his offer to attend Harvard University rescinded. Now, Kyle Kashuf is one of the Parkland students who actually stood out from other Parkland students because following that shooting, which killed 17 people, he came out and said, I'm not in favor of gun control. So naturally, since he stood out in that way, he did get quite a bit of attention. Now, he apparently has great grades and was accepted into Harvard University, but then one of his classmates released a Google Doc which showed some of the racist and anti Semitic things that he had said two years ago. Now, this was two years ago, even before the shooting took place. And shockingly, he went on Fox News to apologize and answer some questions about it. And Fox News did challenge him to their credit. So let's take a look at what he had to say. What were you thinking? Well, at that time, it was really um, a friend group where who could say the most shocking thing and most extreme thing uh, for the sake of shock value. Um, and I'm extremely sorry for it. Um, and I wish I could have taken it back, but I can't. Um, mm-hmm. All I can do right now is seek to right this wrong. And I know that forgiveness isn't given, it's earned. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that, you know, the person who wrote those things is not who I am today. How do we know that? Because uh, you certainly sound heartfelt, but you want to get something. You want to get into Harvard or get into another school. And how do we know that you're not just saying, oh, I didn't mean it? It's a fair question. Um, because at every single possibility uh, that I could have, uh, ever since I've become a public figure, I've condemned racism, I've condemned hatred. Um, and that's why we've seen the alt right come after me so hard, because I've condemned them um, for their racism and, and for their hatred. So look, to be fair to him, he is getting it from the far right. The far right is angry at him because he's not racist enough. Because there have been examples of him condemning racism. And that is something to keep in mind, right? Now, there are members of the right who are now defending him following what Harvard did in rescinding their acceptance. But Let's get a better sense of what he said in that Google Doc, right? Let's get the full context. And again, Fox News did ask him about the specifics in this next clip. In one case, as was mentioned, you typed the N word 11 times in a row and said, and we have it on the screen, Uh you said you were good at typing it because, quote unquote, practice, you see it at the bottom, practice makes perfect. You didn't use the N word once, in one text. You used it 11 times, where does that come from? Look, what I said is indefensible and wrong, and I apologize for repeatedly. Um, But what's also in that same message is I use Mm anti-Semitic jokes. Um, And I basically pray every week, I'm Jewish, my parents are Jewish, they immigrated from Israel. Um, Half my family was was wiped out in the Holocaust. Uh, So clearly, um, that's not indicative of who I am. Um, I'm Jewish, and I'm not anti-Semitic at all. So on that point, you're Jewish, I can't question your faith or anyone's faith, but why in the world would you say kill all the Jews was one of the things you said? You're Jewish, Uh, you just told me me many members of your family were killed in the Holocaust and I'm certainly sorry about that. How could you possibly say kill all the Jews? Because it was in a time where the person who could say the most shocking thing and and that's what that was the aura of the group. So he was again 16 years old at the time of those comments on that Google Doc. And I'm curious to hear what you guys think because my feelings on this are mixed. On one hand, I get that he's he was 16. I mean, I remember being 16 and my mind didn't immediately go to using the N word 11 times in a row in a Google Doc. But okay, people do stupid things when they're 16, fine. But I also believe that no one is entitled to anything, including an acceptance to Harvard University. And Harvard does have a policy that indicates that you could have your offer rescinded if there are issues with your moral character. In fact, they mention that in their acceptance letter, which is important to keep in mind. Now, the right wing is arguing they're doing this because it's political, right? He came out against gun control and these Educational institutions, these college campuses are left wing and they don't like what he had to say. So now they're retaliating against him. That is not the case. If Harvard had only done this once, 
then maybe you'd have an argument, but Harvard has actually done this in the past. Back in 2017, they rescinded the acceptance letters of 10 individuals who were caught saying racist things, right? So this- And anti-Semitic And anti-Semitic and sexist. Yes. Okay, so I hear you on all that. I think they made the wrong decision. Um, so uh, he he said it when he was 16, he said it in a Google Doc. Uh, and it doesn't uh, minimize the impact of what he said, uh, using that word's unacceptable, using it 11 times over and over again, obviously unacceptable. I'm not, I'm not excusing that, but what I'm saying is he said kill all the Jews, he's Jewish. He's obviously in that case joking, so now we are going to take what a 16 year old said in a Google doc to his friends where they're joking and saying terrible things, but joking. And now and say you're not allowed to get in any good schools. So I think it's too tough a standard, but I am also curious about what you all think. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I would agree, agree with the idea that they probably, as a young as a young person, right, we make mistakes, right? But if you look at the use of the term of the N word, right? right. Um, you look at his use of the anti-Semitic tropes. Um, they're never acceptable, right? It's it's the whole idea of because you were young or because of the time. I don't buy any of that. So if you have the gall, right? If you think that that's the, I mean, that's the worst thing you could say or whatever game they were playing and that comes into your mind, right? There's an issue there, right? Regardless of if you're playing, you know, um, you, I heard a story about Denzel Washington. He told the story about a role he turned down in 86 where somebody was, they were trying to get him to play a black guy who never died. He goes through this crazy and he said, well, hanging me is not funny. Um, uh -huh, and uh -huh. he, he, he basically said if, you know, if I was talking about the Holocaust or you know, saying go in this room and well, all of a sudden there's some gas showers, why would that be funny for, for, for me to put, you to put me in a noose on TV and make a joke about it? So there's no context in which, in my opinion, that you know, hey, he's young, he's 16. I, my grandmother used to tell me stories when she was, you know, before she passed, she was born in 1924. And so there was never a proper time to engage in this type, these, these, this use of words or any type of uh, thing that could be, could, could be construed as racism or being prejudiced against people. Because again, some, most of the times your thoughts, right? And what you're saying eventually will become what you do. So to, to David's point, uh, Emmett Till was killed before he got to 16. Right. And so that was a young African American. Uh, and he theoretically whistled at a white woman. That was his big offense. Now it, we found out later he didn't even do that, uh, and and they murdered him. Uh, and so uh, there is different standards for folks in this country. Uh, not getting to Harvard is not the worst thing that could happen to you. Right. Um, and so I understand all that, uh, but I, I I think it is actually somewhat political. And and I'm not saying of of Harvard. I'm saying of his fellow classmates. They outed him. And they outed him because they don't like him, and they don't agree with him. I don't agree with him. I don't. I I can't stand what he said in in this particular story. I also think him helping to misdirect folks about how to prevent the massacres in schools is not helpful. But I also think he gets to have his own opinion about that. And I do think that a lot of people outed him because of his political opinions. And so, in terms of look, you can't just do it based on on GPA. You have to take the whole. Um, issue like David Hogg got into Harvard, and if he should because he's an amazing activist. And when when you were 17, 18 years old, did you lead mass national movements? I actually want to get to that because what I'm seeing the right wing do right now is they will now compare Kashif to other Parkland students who did get into Harvard. David Hogg is one of those students who got into Harvard, and he got into Harvard because his grade point average and his, you know, his educational background is pretty impressive. But there was something that Ben Shapiro said in his podcast, I believe it was today, that really rubbed me the wrong way, and I'll tell you why. Let's take a quick look at the video. Like this is the new standard now that anybody who anybody who has their crap from when they were 16 unearthed and then cast into public view, no matter what they've done since, 
no matter what they've gone through or what they've become as a person, that person's academic life gets ruined and that person is then smeared across academia, that a person can earn admission to Harvard, not on the basis of activism as some of Kyle's classmates did. Let's be real about this. There are certain of Kyle's classmates who did not score appropriately to get into places like Harvard or Columbia. Okay, so let's let's have a little conversation, okay, about how they scored. Because what he did right there was the exact same thing that Laura Ingram did to, to David Hogg, right? So what, what was his grade point average? Was it was it super low and he just happened to get into Harvard because he's a, a, a liberal who wants uh, gun control? No, um, he actually has a very high uh, GPA. So uh, Kushif's defenders uh, noted that Hogg had a 4.2 grade point average and scored uh, 12, uh, 1270 on the SAT test, while uh, you know Kashif uh, said in an interview that his GPA was 5.4. Whatever. Hogg has a high GPA, so he deserves to get into Harvard. And why are we comparing someone who contributed incredibly anti-Semitic and racist crap in a Google Doc to someone who didn't? David Hogg didn't do that, which is why he's not having an issue with Harvard, whereas Kashuf did. Now, I think it's fair to have a conversation about you know the nature of cancel culture and whether it makes sense to you know come down on him like a ton of bricks when he did this at 16. Fine, that's a fair discussion. But why are we needlessly dragging innocent students into this discussion and and smearing them as people who don't deserve to get into an Ivy League? Especially when they have high GPAs. Well, look, like I said, I remember I, I was so proud that like I, I don't even remember what the issue was about. It was mainly because I was probably a loudmouth, but I, I did some walk out of school when I was a kid, and it was a tiny little thing. David Hogg helped organize massive national protests. Yeah, that's a big deal, and he has great grades. Now, on the other hand, Kashif has even better grades. 5.4 GPA, I don't even know how that's possible. And 1550 on the SATs, the maximum is 1600, that is a phenomenal score. But they don't do it just based on grades. I know tons of kids with 1600s on their SAT scores, unbelievable GPAs that aren't getting into Harvard, because they look at the totality of the person. And by the way, if you're really upset about that, the number one thing you should be upset about is legacy admissions. Because they get to go in with much lower grades and much lower scores because their daddy or their mommy went to those schools. I think it's like 40% of Harvard. So that's the real systemic injustice that's going on at the universities. But again, I just, I guess we got a disagreement here. I think that a 16 year old says stupid things all the time. In this case, it was abhorrent stupid things. But but especially given that he joked about his own background, I believe him more that he was joking and he was trying to shock his fellow idiot 16 year olds. And I don't know when we say, okay, that's enough. Now let's let him go on with his life. I don't know, I don't One know, it's a thing. hard question. One more thing. So of course, all of the attacks are toward Harvard and the decision that Harvard made, but there's one little Inconvenient fact that the right wing leaves out of their argument. He actually resigned from Turning Point USA following these revelations. Turning Point USA is a right wing Koch brothers funded yes. organization. Why aren't we going after Turning Point USA for forcing them to for forcing him to resign following these revelations? What happened? What happened? Okay. Turning Point USA can make the decision they want to make because guess what? He's not entitled to being part of Turning Point USA, which by the way is a pretty deplorable organization to begin with. Right. And Harvard University is not something or, or, or an institution that we're all entitled to go to. They get to make a decision, they get to make decisions about whether someone lacks moral character to be accepted into the university. But one other thing I just want to mention, just think about the experiences of, of People of color who do get accepted to those Ivy Leagues and how isolating it is for them to be on those campuses where legacy admissions do rule who who gets accepted and who doesn't, right? It's rare to see people of color on those college campuses. So I can understand why these Ivy League schools might wanna take actions against some students who would make that environment a little more difficult than it needs to be for these students.